It is so. The Count Claudio shall marry the daughter of Leonardo. Yea, but I can cross it. Show me briefly how. I think I told your lordship a year since how much I'm in the favor of Margaret, the lady gentlewoman to hear. I remember. Find me a meet hour to draw on Pedro and the Count Claudio alone. Tell them that you know Hero loves me. Intend a kind of zeal, both to the Prince and Claudio. They will scarcely believe this without trial. Offer them instances which bear no less likelihood than to see me at her chamber window. Hear me call Margaret Hero. Hear Margaret turn me Claudio. And bring them to see this the night before the intended wedding. For in the meantime, I will so fashion the matter that Hero will be absent. And there shall appear such seeming truths of Hero's disloyalty that Jealousy shall be called assurance, and all the preparation overthrown. <laughs> Grow this to what at first issue it can. I will put it in practice. I do much wonder that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates his behaviors to love, will, after he hath laughed at such shallow follies in others, become the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. And such a man is Claudio. Love shall never make me such a fool. One woman is fair, yet I am well. Another is virtuous, yet I am well. Another wise, yet I am well. But till all of graces be in one woman, one woman shall not come in my grace. Rich she shall be, that's certain. Wise, or I'll none. Virtuous, or I'll never cheapen her. Fair, or I'll never look on her. Mild, or come not near me. Noble, or not for an angel, of good discourse, an excellent musician, and her hair shall be of what color it please God. <laughs> ah, the prince and Monsieur Love. I will hide me in the arbor. <laughs> See you where Benedict hath hid himself? Come, Leonardo, what was it you told me of today that your niece Beatrice was in love with Benedict? Oh, I stuck on, stuck on, the foul sits. I did never think that lady would have loved any man. Uh, uh no, nor I neither, but it's most <laughs> <coughs> wonderful that she should so dote on Signor Benedict, who from all outward appearances seemed ever to abhor. <laughs> Is possible? Sits the wind in that corner? Why, what effects of passion shows she? Break the hook well, this fish will bite. Uh, 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 what effects, my lord? Well, my daughter will sit with you. Uh, uh, my daughter told you how. <laughs> she did indeed. How? How, I pray you. Uh, I would have thought her spirit had been invincible against all assaults of affection. Uh, and I would have sworn it had, especially against Signor Benedict. I should think this a gull, but that the white-bearded fellow speaks it. He hath ta'en the infection. Hold it up. <laughs> Hath she made her affection known to him? No, and she never will. That's her torment. Uh, Tis true indeed, so your daughter says. Shall I, says she, that have so oft encountered him with scorn, write to him that I love him? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this says she now when she is beginning to write to him, for she'll be up twenty times a night, and there will she sit in her smock till she hath written a sheet of paper. My daughter tells us all. <laughs> then down upon her knees she falls, weeps, sobs, beats her heart, tears her hair, prays, curses. Oh, sweet Benedict, God give me patience. <laughs> she doth indeed, my daughter says so. <laughs> She were an excellent sweet lady, and out of all suspicion, she is virtuous. And she's exceeding wise. In everything but loving Benedict. Hey! Oh. <laughs> I am sorry for her, and I have much cause, being both her uncle and her guardian. Hero thinks surely she will die, for she says she will die if he love her not. And she will die ere she make her love known. And she will die if he woo her, rather than she will bait one breath of her accustomed crossness. I would she had bestowed this dotage on me. I would have daft all other respects and made her half myself. Well, I am sorry for your niece. <laughs> I love Benedict well, 
and could wish that he would <laughs> modestly examine himself to see how much he is unworthy to have so good a lady. Will you walk, my lord? Dinner is ready. If you do not dote on upon this, I will never trust my expectation. <laughs> Let the same net be spread for her, and that must your daughter and her gentlewoman carry. Let us call her to send him in to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> this can be no trick. The conference was sadly born. They have the truth of this from a hero. They seem to pity the lady. It seems her affections have the full bent. Love me? Why, it must be requited. I hear how I am censured. They say she would rather die than give any sign of affection. They say, too, I will bear myself proudly if she perceived the love come from me. I could never think to marry. I must not seem proud. Happy are they that hear the detractions and can put them to mending. They say the lady is fair. It is so, I can bear them witness. And virtuous, it is a truth, I cannot reprove it. And wise, but for loving me. <laughs> I might show there is no addition to her wit. And no great argument of her folly, for I will be horribly in love with her! <laughs> when I said I would die a bachelor, <laughs> I, I did not think I would live till I were married. <laughs> By my troth, here comes Beatrice. By this day, she's a fair lady. <laughs> I do spy some marks of love in her. <laughs> Against my will, I'm sent to bid you come in to dinner. Fair Beatrice, I thank you for your pains. Took no more pains for those thanks than you take pains to thank me. If it had been painful, I would not have come. You take pleasure then in the message? Yea, just so much as you may take upon a knife's point and choke a doll with all. <laughs> <laughs> you have no stomach, senor? Fare you well. <laughs> Against my will, I am bid to send you come in to dinner. <laughs> There's a double meaning in that. <laughs> I took no more pains for those thanks than you took pains to thank me. But that's as much as to say, any pains I take for you is as easy as thanks. If I do not take pity on her, I am a villain. <laughs> I will go get her picture. 